Hey, I'm Ron with Endor Labs, and you've probably heard us talk about reachability analysis and how it's an amazing way to take all of the risks and vulnerabilities that you might have in your open source code and filter them down to the ones that are reachable, fixable, and exploitable, as saving the amount of time that your engineering team needs to spend triaging, investigating, and actually fixing these vulnerabilities. Well, today I want to show you the next evolution of that. But let's actually start by going to one of my projects here. And I have 149 findings here. And I want to start filtering these down to the ones that I want my engineering team to work on. So let's start by only taking a look at my criticals and highs. And I want to take a look at the ones that are in reachable functions that have a fix available and are not in test dependencies. And you can do all of this with Ender Labs without any runtime agents. Uh, that's the beauty of uh, program analysis. I can also add EPSS to this, and I want to say, show me anything that has an EPSS score of uh, over 1%, so over 1% of uh, exploitability according to EPSS. And I'm down to 28 findings, and we started with 149. So this is already a pretty good start, and I have an example here that I want to show you with Jackson Data Bind. We can take a look at reachability analysis in action where we can take a look at the call path itself. So I can see that there's one path from my code all the way to the vulnerable function. And this is the smoking gun. This is what I can move over to, to my engineering team and have them work on it. But if I take a look at the version that I need to upgrade to, to fix, which is usually the recommendation that you'll get from your SCA tool, and I need to go to 2.9.10.6 in order to do this. Now, this is typically where things break down because upgrading can be incredibly painful. And we can learn that, yes, there are higher critical vulnerabilities here, but upgrading from the version that we're on to the version where we need to be will introduce a lot of breaking changes and will force us to do a lot of refactoring on our code. And that's why a lot of these vulnerabilities never end up getting fixed. This is where I'd like to show you upgrades and remediation. If I'll go over here to remediations, uh, let's take a look at that same Jackson data bind. And I can see my remediation options. How can I fix this? I can see that I have a few options here. I have an option that uh, fixes three criticals and 10 highs and has a low remediation risk, meaning we have done upgrade impact analysis and we've looked for, will this upgrade introduce any breaking changes? If I go for the fix that, for example, that fixes the most vulnerabilities here, then I can take a look at the potential breaking changes. Yes, it will fix these critical vulnerabilities that are reachable, that have a fix available, uh, that are all in uh, direct dependencies, and some of these are in transitive dependencies. But also, I can see that with a high level of confidence, the function class name ID resolver that is being directly used by the deserialization POC function in my code will force me to do some refactoring in order to manage this update. So there are a few benefits to this. One, I can do some expectation setting now where I can say, hey, this is not going to be a trivial update. Or I can make a more informed decisions about the trade-offs where I can say, we might not fix all the vulnerabilities, but we might actually get something done. So I see that I have some pretty good options here, but what if I need something that's easier and faster and I need it right now? That is where Endor Magic patches come into play. I can see that for Jackson Data Bind here, I have an Endor Magic patch available. With Endor Magic patches, Endor Labs will patch the vulnerabilities that are critical to you and will backport them to the version of the code that you're already using. If it would have taken me 50,000 lines of code to uh, refactor and to upgrade to latest, it will take me seven lines of code to use the Ender Magic patch and fix these three critical vulnerabilities. And the way that we do this is completely transparent. You can take a look at the build, test, and deploy logs. We uh, provide the source code and reproducible builds. And you can also take a look at the exact seven lines of code that need to be changed in order to patch this. So now you're able to address the most critical vulnerabilities as fast as possible while minimizing the amount of effort involved. And then you can decide what is the best remediation path moving forward. We're incredibly excited about this and there's a lot more coming. We're already seeing this be a total game changer for Ender Labs customers. 
And if you want to learn more, please join us at androlabs.com.